Those of you who watch TFB TV know that I don't really appreciate old guns, right? Well, I inherited one. This is a perfect, mint condition, pristine, unfired Colt 1903 pocket hammerless pistol. It was issued to my step-grandfather, Melvin Bookman, who was a brigadier general in the U.S. Army and a man among men. He could, and often would, eat an entire box of double stuff Oreos in one sitting, and in no way am I exaggerating. Funny story, I actually tracked down an old photo and a newspaper article about the general on eBay, totally random. Brigadier General Bookman, kind of a big deal, and he's from here in New Orleans, which is cool. General Bookman passed this gun down to his son, my stepfather, Alan Bookman, who was an Army Jag in the Army, just like his dad, just as much of a stud as his dad. The General Allen, aka Butch, was like a father to me. Even though he was 30 years older than I am, he was still one of the boys. Man never said no to happy hour, went to a strip club a couple of times with him, don't tell mom about that. He was even president of the Florida Bar. Unfortunately, Alan passed away Christmas Eve 2021, and that's how I ended up with a Brigadier General's flawless, unfired Colt 1903 hammerless. Alan knew this is something that would be important to me, so he left it to me to do whatever I wanted with it. And I will do whatever I want with it. Now, before we get to that, let's talk about the 1903 Pocket. The Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless Pistol is a small semi-automatic 32 ACP handgun designed by John Moses Browning, produced by Colt's Manufacturing Company. Maybe you've heard of them. This beautiful, elegant handgun was first introduced in 1903, remained in production until the late 1940s. The pistol was marketed as a concealed carry pistol, was popular among civilians, law enforcement, military, and even mobsters. It might be called a hammerless, but it's not hammerless. Rather, it has an internal hammer to prevent snagging on clothes for carry in a, you guessed it, pocket like Al Capone used to do. It fires 32 ACP, seven round magazine, simple blowback operation. Because of its small size, it's lightweight, it's actually super easy to carry and conceal. One of the flattest guns out there still, even though it's over 100 years old. 572,214 Colt pocket pistols were produced from 1903 to 1945, many issued to U.S. Army officers from World War II through the 70s until the 1911 became the officer's pistol in 1972. Obviously, this is how General Bookman got his, which was coincidentally stolen in New Orleans in the 70s, according to the paperwork I have. I've been there. Even though the Army was running out of 1903s since they stopped making them in the 1940s, they still issued this new model, reissued to him, and he never took it out of the box. Like I said, this was Al Capone's gun of choice for concealed carry, seriously. Bonnie Parker taped one of these to her inside thigh when she broke Clyde Barrow out of jail. John Dillinger was carrying a 1903 when he was shot by the FBI. The 1903 and the 380 version, the 1908, were issued with a fine leather holster, a leather pistol belt with a gold clasp, and a leather two-pocket magazine pouch. A cleaning rod, two spare magazines were also included, and I've got almost all of this stuff in the kit with the gun. I've even got a bunch of the original paperwork that came with the gun, Let's check that out real quick. We've got an inventory, basic issue list, items for pistol, Colt, Cal, 32 automatic, magazine, cleaning rod, cleaning brush, hip holster, box clip holder. One of you YouTube commenters needs to explain to the Army the difference between clip and magazine. The original certificate of ownership and photocopies, both for the original stolen gun, and the replacement. Holster with gold accents, still brand new in the wrap, never been opened. A letter dated June 11, 1965. Commanding General, U.S. Army Weapons Command, Field Service Division, Rock Island, Illinois, requests that certificates of ownership for pistols caliber 32 automatic be issued to the following reserve component general officers assigned in this command. Brigadier General Charles D. Henley, Brigadier General Denver W. Meacham, and Brigadier General Melvin I. Bookman. 
a certificate of ownership for the original gun, not the replacement gun, with a handwritten note scrawled up in the top corner here that says pistol stolen March 1970, reported to NOPD. Good luck with that, I guess, if anyone sees a Colt 1903 with serial number 568454, holler at your boy, I've got 500 bucks for you. And I love this, the instruction manual or instruction sheet that came with it, and this is the original. Introduced around the turn of the century, the Browning Design 32 Pocket Automatic Pistol was the first hammerless or concealed hammer pistol produced by the Colt firm. Early models show a single patent date of April 20, 1897. Later models bear the additional December 22, 1903 patent date. A salient design feature of this excellent pistol is the slide lock safety mechanism, which, in addition to its primary function of holding the slide to the rear, also serves as a mechanical safety to block the hammer and as a means of determining whether the hammer is cocked. When the hammer is down in a fired position, the slide lock safety cannot be pushed upward to engage the slide cut. The grip safety, which automatically blocks the sear to prevent discharge of the gun unless pressure is simultaneously applied to both the trigger and grip safety, is another important and widely copied feature. It also serves as a cocking indicator by projecting from the rear of the grip only when the hammer is cocked. Initially offered in 32 caliber only, the pistol was announced in the additional 380 ACP chambering in 1908. It's possible to convert either model to either caliber by simply substituting magazine and barrel. See, that was enlightening. I didn't know any of this. Very cool. Colt still has a serial number lookup. This one was made 79 years ago in 1944. No one has fired it. No one has modified it. No one has even touched it until today. What am I going to do with this, guys? In my opinion, this should be in a museum, not in the hands of a degenerate like me. This is a priceless piece of gun history. I have no appreciation whatsoever for old guns. So what do I try to do? I try to do the right thing. I tried to send it to the Cody Firearms Museum, but they said they were full. They would need a, a sizable donation to get the money for the exhibit. I tried getting in touch with the World War II Museum. Nothing. I suppose I could sell this, but for obvious sentimental reasons, I'm not going to just sell it for money. If it's not going to be in a museum, I damn sure don't want someone else to have it. So that means it just sits in a box in my closet behind my short shorts where it's been for the past year plus. What's the point? No one sees it but me. No one's going to enjoy it. No one gets to shoot it. It's just going to be hidden away. Well, not anymore. I'm going to shoot it. But therein lies the problem. How am I supposed to enjoy this? Old guns, they got crappy sights, crappy triggers, they're unreliable, they're prone to rust. list goes on and on. So if I'm shooting it, I want to have a good time. I want this gun to be accurate. I want it to be reliable. But most importantly, I want it to look good and not rust as these guns were prone to do. So to those ends, I think this could use an optics mount. I think it could use a trigger job and maybe a sick Cerakote job. So to help me with that, I called my boy Vinny at Monsoon Tactical, or as I call him, Leonardo da Vinny, because he is a master of gun coating. I told Vinny about my problem. He said, James, relax. Got you. He had the perfect suggestion for a coating. In 1942, the U.S. military made its first attempt at disruptive coloration camo. They called it frog skin. Marine Raiders were first issued frog skin battle uniforms, which were reversible, with a five-color green jungle pattern on one side, three-color khaki beach pattern on the other side. Vinny suggested that I do the beach frog skin, and I could not be more pleased with that suggestion. I also asked him if he could mill a 1903 for the optic because it's too thin. There's no way to actually just mill an optic footprint. However, then he's got a secret little trick that he performs on guns that are too thin to take a red dot. He actually will mill right here, will remove the rear sight and mill a small flat here. And then he'll blueprint the platform, the footprint for the optic and screw it into the gun and then that optic mounting platform will have two screw holes itself. Flat dark earth colored Sig Romeo Zero. It'll go great with frog skin beach. It'll look really good. I'll probably bring it to a local gunsmith, get a trigger job on it before I shoot it. So I'm excited. I could tell my stepdad Alan would be excited and I can tell the general would be excited about this. I'm going to ship this thing off to Vinny and we're going to see it in a few months.
Today's the day, boys. The MOT. Gun just came back from Monsoon Tactical. Let's have a look at what we got. Vinny. 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 Leonardo to goddamn Vinny. Would you look at that? Holy shit. It literally could not be. I could not be happier with this than I am right now. I know my stepdad would love this. I know General Bookman would love this. Probably put it in his fancy holster, wear it with his officer suit. Amazing. I mean, you look at this and you would have no idea that this gun's almost 100 years old. By the way, I got one of the last FD. I think they were discontinued between when I made the first video and now. The Romeo Zero and Flat Dark Earth. I got it for like 100 bucks. So that worked out really well and it looks great. It's like the perfect shade of the FDE to go with this pistol. I mean, really, it would have been a travesty to put a plain old black optic on this beautifully refinished firearm. Look, if any of you guys are upset, I'm really sorry. I had to do it. What else was I going to do with it? I still have to shoot it. I'm doing that for sure. In fact, we're going to go out to the range today, and I'm going to go shoot this damn thing. Twenty five feet with the nineteen oh three pocket. Yeah, check that out. So there's a mag there, there's a mag there, there's a mag there. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is my first time. I just shot my first box through this. I am enjoying this way more than I possibly could have imagined. Thanks, Grandpa. 50 yards, steel silhouette target. Let's see what kind of accuracy we get out of this thing. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's too easy. Like, there's no recoil. This thing, especially with the optic, is accurate as shit. I love it. This gun ain't a 1903 pocket anymore. It's a 2023 rocket. I cannot believe how well this thing performed at the range. It shoots good. It looks good. It's the total package. Yeah, again, I understand some of you would be mad that I'd refinish this pristine gun. I'd shoot this historical firearm. But just imagine, this thing could be sitting in the dark in my walk-in closet until I died, getting passed on to somebody else, never seeing the light of day, never being used, never being enjoyed. Now through YouTube, it will live forever until YouTube bans me, I guess. But I know that stepdaddy Alan and Brigadier General Bookman are looking down from heaven, smiling to see this pistol fulfill its potential after three generations of waiting. I am in utter disbelief at how fun this gun was to shoot. I really enjoyed myself. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope you had a great time with it. Thank you again to Vinny, Leonardo da Vinny at Monsoon Tactical, who absolutely crushed it with the refinish and the optics cut. Of course, thank you to Ventura Munitions, the guys who sent the two boxes of 32 ACP. I ran through this thing. Only ran two boxes, but it was totally flawless. Ran perfectly. Dude, I might run some hollow points through this thing next time. I think this could be a suitable tuxedo gun. The accuracy was bananas at 25 feet. It was flawless. Again, I truly enjoyed shooting this. I had a great time. Thank you to Tom and Michelle at Top Gun Supply who've always sponsored this program. Guys, thank you again for watching. Take care. All right, all right, all right. You guys know I'm just f***ing with you, right? Come on, how many of you seriously watched this video all the way through and would think that I would molest a pristine firearm, much less a family heirloom? Worse, which of you actually left a shitty comment down below the video before you even finished it? Go ahead, edit that comment to say you're sorry, you son of a bitch. 
Other than the fact that I have not fired or altered this 1903, I even feel bad for touching it. I'm going to put CLP all over it. Almost everything I told you in this video is true, including the fact that I tried to send this gun to the Cody Firearms Museum. Sorry, not this one. This one. But they wouldn't take it. This gun belongs in a museum, not hidden away in my f***ing sock drawer for no one to enjoy but me. I've got a bit of an Indiana Jones complex when it comes to guns. I think particularly rare examples like this one shouldn't belong to me, shouldn't be in my individual private collection or anybody's. Hopefully someone from the D-Day Museum or Cody Firearms Museum or whatever is watching this and would consider taking my step-granddad's Colt Pocket Hammerless made in 1944 to display. But what about this one? Even though I could arguably be called iconoclastic for doing what I did to any Colt 1903, I've got a valid excuse for this one. When I came up with this video idea, essentially a very expensive and very elaborate prank that was financed by our supporters on Subscribestar and Utreon, without them knowing it, <laughs> which, by the way, do me a favor, sponsor us on Subscribestar or Utreon if you like the program because we are viewer supported. But when I came up with this idea, I want to say I spent years, months, weeks hunting for the perfect 1903 for using in this video, but I log on a gun broker and right there, this thing falls into my lap. It was a mechanically flawless Colt 1903, built in 1919, perfect mechanical shape, but covered in rust. Before I bought it, I sent pictures to Vinny at Monsoon. I asked him if he could save it. He said, no problem, and what a wonderful, virtually flawless job Vinny did in saving this 1903. You can see a little bit of pitting towards the muzzle, but other than that, if you would have seen the condition this gun was in beforehand, it's incredible what Vinny did, and he made it look great. Because of your support and, of course, Vinny's talent, we took this beautiful 104-year-old pistol that was just decaying, and we gave it a new lease on life, and now it's fantastic, in my opinion. Maybe we can breathe new life into General Bookman's 1903 pocket. Maybe somebody out there is watching it. You've got some swing at the Firearms Museum or the D-Day World War II Museum, whatever, and this gets on display publicly where I personally think it belongs. But look, worst case scenario, at least I got to share it with you guys and it'll live on on YouTube for hopefully ever. I love you, Alan. I miss you. Guys, thanks for letting me share this video with you. Thanks again for watching and take care of yourselves.